Mineral Resources Minister Susan Jabango has confirmed that a ruling party ANC has declared coal as a strategic resource. Now this move is designed to protect South Africa's coal reserves which are responsible for more than 90% of electricity generation in the country. Let's delve into uh, what this all means, the implications of this decision. Uh, we've got Bevan Jones, General Manager at London Commodity Brokers joining us from Cape Town. So Bevan, uh, so ultimately basically what the government is really trying to do is reduce the cost of coal to ESCOM and therefore help hopefully reduce the cost of electricity but this of course has knock-on effects for, for miners here in South Africa. Let's first talk about the disparity in prices between what uh, ESCOM pays to coal miners and then what ESCOM or what coal miners get on the export market. Uh, just a uh, color that story for us. All right I mean obviously there's a there's a big um, difference in, in terms of quality so the, the mines that go to the export market are obviously, if you look at a Vitbank price in rands per tonne, you're probably looking at about 550 rand on an export parity basis. Eskim's obviously buying coal, much lower quality coal, on a, on a cost plus basis, which is probably in the order of 150 rand to possibly, when they have to buy in the spot market, around 400 rand a tonne. Um, the problem is that you know the uh, cost increases, cost plus, always goes one way. Prices keep rising on that basis. And if you extrapolate that forward, there could come a time when Eskom's paying higher prices for lower quality material than what the export market will be. Because of course the export market is quite depressed at the moment. Mm -hmm. So ultimately if Eskom's paying higher prices, it will mean uh, Eskom needs to recoup these prices somehow. And we know how uh, that story plays out. Um, but what, what are your thoughts on declaring a strategic resource in a country and, and what that might mean for uh, the mining sector here in South Africa? Because uh, questions around how in fact is going to be implemented right now, uh, could they put a, a, a levy on exports? Uh, will they cap prices domestically? Uh, what are your thoughts on, on uh, kind of the implications of those two? Again, it's, it's very much a quality issue and, uh, and obviously we haven't seen any details. But clearly, um, there's a certain quality of coal. Eskom simply can't burn the high quality material because the stations wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, Indonesia looked at doing something very similar over the last uh, short period. Um, and they've actually scrapped plans to declare coal a national resource simply because it would have killed the, uh, the, the junior mining sector, the emerging mining sector in Indonesia. Um, basically, Indonesia is a very low quality coal producer, much lower than South Africa. And if they had potentially banned exports from Indonesia or put an export tariff on, uh, the projections were that the Indonesian coal miners would have, would have pretty much gone out of business. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, South Africa is a slightly different uh, kettle of fish, but we face very much similar issues. Um, clearly, if, if there's either a ban put in place for a certain quality of coal or if export tariffs are put on to a certain higher, slightly higher quality of coal, that will have an impact on the market price of coal out of South Africa. Coal prices will go up internationally, but of course the South African coal miners won't be able to participate in that mm -hmm. and they won't enjoy the benefits of that. And, and many of the miners will probably either probably go out of business, look for other opportunities. What it will mean is that it, it will mean there's a lot more coal running around on the roads, everyone scrambling to try and supply Eskom. I think they should really be looking at focusing on the efficiencies of delivering coal to the power stations at the cheapest possible cost. And um, you know, we've certainly announced today um, something that, that can potentially solve all of this and, and avoid that situation and avoid nationalization of the coal mm -hmm. industry. Yeah, you're looking to, to launch a coal futures here on the JSC, still a, a few months away from uh, that potential launch. But tell us about the mechanism, the, the structure of this coal future and how that addresses the, the issue around cost to ESCOM ultimately. So es essentially what we're looking to do is, is, is uh, launch a physically delivered uh, future which is traded on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, the, the old Safex uh, division. So very much they have, the, they have the maize contract at the moment which is physically delivered maize. Clearly there's issues around national food security around that and, and, and our partners in this, the, the JSE, are obviously quite experienced when it, when it comes to launching these types of new products. In coal, it will be a physically delivered contract, which is not Eskom quality coal. It's slightly lower than the current export grade, which is called the RB1 grade. Um, but it, what it will establish is effectively a rands per ton price 
for delivery anywhere in the Witbank area to any of the coal sidings in the Witbank and Pumalanga area. There will be a reference price for that. And the beauty about that is that the junior miners can simply concentrate on mining. They can deliver their coal to any, of, any registered siding in the area. Mm -hmm. You'll have sidings which are open sidings and, and, and closed sidings, depending on how many sellers, how many buyers at each location. And there will be a price differential. So, for instance, in the Delmas area, buyers might be prepared to pay slightly more. In the Carolina area, they might be prepared to pay slightly less. The market will sort out the pricing. It's, it, there's no artificial market pricing mechanism. It's a, it will be a free market. It will obviously trade at an export parity price to the export price. And the, as I say, the, the beauty is what it really benefits is the junior miners. They get paid immediately on delivery to the terminal. There's all of a sudden the issues around logistics and supply and, and getting through the ports doesn't become an issue anymore because they, they don't need to pay for rail and they don't need to pay for port allocation to be able to access the export market. Mm -hmm. it, what it also does is it creates centralized hubs effectively which um, helps in getting coal off the roads and getting it onto rail, um, sorting out a lot of the, the issues in, in, in Pumalanga. And it does also make efficiencies, um, it, it, it improves efficiencies for Eskom, et cetera. I mean, they, they would be able who, to, who to, to see these. Who's going to ultimately, as you say, uh, be, be collecting the coal and uh, managing this mechanism? I mean, uh, it does sound very optimistic right now in terms of what, what you're looking to do. But uh, I mean, that's also quite a feat in itself, uh, implementing all these, uh, these logistic structures. Correct. I mean, but, but in, in a sense, nothing is changing from the way the market works at the moment. The market is, is a, it's a bilateral market at the moment. There, there are truckers, there are rail operators, obviously Transnet's intimately involved. We don't envisage any of that changing. Simply, some of the sidings at the moment will become registered delivery points on the JSE. It'll become a bit more formalized. Essentially, what this does is it brings transparency to the local coal price. And you can look at then bringing transparency to power prices as well, mm -hmm. because you can express coal in rands per ton, but you can also express it in cents per kilowatt hour. So roughly at the moment, at current coal prices, you, you would think um, Eskim would probably be paying around 15 cents per kilowatt hour for the coal cost. And you can then work that out as a percentage of power prices. So it becomes very transparent. It, it, it helps. Um, the it levels the playing field effectively for junior miners. Yep. It means that banks can now come in and finance projects on the back of collateral at these various terminals. It means that people can invest in our coal mining sector. Unfortunately, making coal a strategic resource or, or, or putting a ban on exports or, 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 or import, uh, a tax, etc., will unfortunately reduce investment in the sector.